Man, tell me, uh, cause pop my trunk. That was what, oh six, seven, somewhere over there. You know your history, oh six. Yeah, yeah. It started in late oh five. Like it started to bubble in oh five, and then it just oh, hit. Six, it was smash. Yeah, it was yeah. bam in oh six. Yeah. yeah. Man, so okay, cause this is what tripped me out. You know what I mean? Uh, cause they were saying like, you know, with the whole Iggy thing, I was reading up on that, and they were saying y'all met like a couple years around that. How do you meet somebody? She ain't from the age, right? It was in uh, 2000. I, I got to be limited in how much I talk about this. Gotcha. So, uh, you say the name or whatever. Okay, gotcha. But um, it was at it was in 2008, and I met her through uh, Mr. Lee. People don't even know that. No he, shit. <laughs> yeah, it's blowing your mind. It's even more crazy. Yeah, what? Mr. Lee, it's two things. It's a couple of things about Mr. Lee. Number one, he's a mastermind. People don't even know it. This dude is like a scientist of producers. Don't get it twisted. This dude oh, knows. Oh, the GOAT, for sure. As far as Texas is concerned, the GOAT or all this. I always can note somebody's gift. He is off the, it's just off a of scale. So when we met each other, I, it's like he, he knew me. And I knew him. It's like two dudes. Like I was like, oh yeah, you ain't who they think you are, nigga. You, you, you know, what I'm saying that's how we met. So it, it, it was a uh, uh, some Asian guys who had tons of money, tons of money, and they uh, they were starting a label, and they wanted Mr. Lee to be the producer and just run a portion of the label, and. Uh, Mr. Lee was wise, so he knew he needed a team of producers. And he sought me out because he know if it's a lot of work, that's what I'm good at, you know. So he called me to uh, come through so they can meet me. And I went over there, man, and uh, I see this pretty girl sitting in the, in the lobby. So I'm like, what's up? And he and Mr. Lee know I'm, you know. I like the exotics, you feel me? Uh, me uh, Walter D used to say, man, the kind of women I've seen you with don't make no kind of sense. I said, well, be honest. Because I, when I got shot in the face, I told myself, I'm going to be with women who people say they can't be with me. Like the ones that's, that's too high to reach, them the only ones I want. So uh, Mr. Lee say, hey, man, this, this girl, you know, she was hitting me when she was, young like 16 years old on myspace trying to come to america and saying she listens to houston hip-hop <laughs> a little white girl from australia like that's crazy ain't it so <laughs> and uh she don't know if she want to be a model or a rapper and all this other stuff man and he told her when she was like i think 15 or 16 he said look you know it's inappropriate for me to be talking to you so when you hit 18 look me up maybe we can work together he was just trying to like, hey, you know, get up there. This, you know, I ain't finna caught up in no bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. So she told her mama that Mr. Lee was gonna make her a superstar. She amped it. So on her 18th birthday, she came to Houston. <laughs> <laughs> so I met her on her birthday, bro. So she's sitting in the lobby, Mr. Lee, like, I don't even know why she had her. <laughs> like, like, you know what I'm saying? So, so she's not with these people y'all supposed to be meeting with. This is just a random. She fight. showed up. And he just being courteous, told her where he is, and just that's how Mr. Lee is. He's just nice like that. And then when he seen me, he said, oh, thank you. I already know you can deal with that. I don't, you know what I'm saying? So that's how I, that happened, man. And and she was she was actually dope, creatively dope. How she dressed, style, she artists, know how to paint, draw. She was gifted, and I'm like connected to people like that because I can do anything. I can draw, paint, do anything, build something, sculpt, whatever. So we just kicked it off and coming like that. So that's how that started, you know. And of course, it went to hell, but that's how it started. Hmm. It's damn. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> what it is. Are you scratching yeah. your head about the Mr. Lee? These little connections. I mean, all you these, off. all these things of. <laughs> She's coming around 16 years yeah. old, talking about she listening to Houston rap, and then she pops up 18 at the studio on the day y'all have. It's just a bunch of random shit going on. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy, man. And then, so, I mean, yes. Yeah. Okay, I got you. So, I mean, at the end, but for the record, you could say that you, would you say that you kind of groomed her in a sense to be an artist and understand the way the music business goes? I, I would say it like this. 
Number one, you can't make somebody nothing that ain't there anyway. I just helped her see where it was, you know. And uh, I did that for a lot of artists that people don't know. I'm not going to put them out there. I, like I said earlier, I don't, like some people, they just want all the shine. And I like to see people come up. I like to people, see people who they think can't do it, do it. And she was one of them. Cause everywhere I took her, they like, she ain't, ain't no way she can't be no rapper. She need to be modeling all this. They was down on the left and right, and that just motivated me even more. And she got good at it, real good at it. But how she showed up, uh, you know, with Ti was different than how she showed up with me. I knew that she would be a mega star if she stuck to pop rap. I knew the hood in the black community wasn't going to respect you trying to do that. And it backfired on her. But as we see, her greatest hit is the one that was pop, hip hop. And that's the stuff that I was producing on, which is heat, straight heat. Hmm. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston.